Hello everyone, welcome to this session uh, called the SS position in real time on my mobile in less than 15 minutes. Uh, as I'm a French person, I would like to say bon appétit to you. Uh, <laughs> so, <coughs> quickly to introduce myself, my name is Audrey. I'm developer relations at streamdata.io. We got a booth just over there, so feel free to come and say hello. Uh, and I'm also the co-leader in France of DevOps for Kids. So, my challenge today will be to live code a mobile application which gives us the uh, ESS position, the internal spaceship station position in real time, uh, which has to be iOS and Android compatible in less than 15 minutes. Uh, to win my bet, I'm going to use this API, which is open source, available on GitHub. You can have a look on the, on the code. Really nice one. So my solution uh, to uh, win the challenge is to use for the mobile hybrid part of the application Ionic which is a mobile hybrid framework. And for the real-time part of the application, I'm going to use our product, Stream Data, which is a proxy available as a SaaS, which turns any JSON API into a stream of data. Um, quickly, to introduce Ionic, uh, Ionic is based on both AngularJS and Apache Cordova. Uh, in this session, I'm going to use AngularJS, even if a new version has been released of Ionic, um, Ionic 3, I think, last week has been released, um, which is based on Angular, but at the moment, Angular does not really play well with service and events. You get to make some kind of hacks, so it will not be nice. Uh, I really hope they will work on it quickly. Um, so, an Ionic application looks like this. As it's uh, an hybrid mobile application, it means that it's based on a web view, which is basically a browser bundled into a native application. Um, so it means that on the front part of our application, we're going to use technologies we are familiar with. We're going to use HTML, CSS. Uh, if you want to make SAS and less, you can. It's already included. And obviously, we're going to make JavaScript. Uh, we're also going to use Hynic framework, uh, which will provide us services and components uh, ready to go. So, for example, they got a nice spinner wheel that we can use with only two methods. You know, you're putting the method to open the, the spinner, and on the other class, you put the method to call to close the spinner. And you can easily customize it if you need. So it's really nice. Uh, on the business logic part of our application, it will be completely Angular. So, for example, the, the router we are going to use is the Angular router. And then we're going to use Cordova for two very important things. The first one is uh, each time we, will, we would like to access to some uh, devices APIs. So for example, if we want to use the Bluetooth or the camera or to access contact, um, we're going to use Cordova. And the second big task of Cordova is to compile the application towards platform you're targeting. So it's Cordova who is going to make the compilation towards iOS and Android. Um, so when talking about real time, Usually, a few solution, solutions are mentioned. Uh, the first one is polling, which is probably the most uh, simple one, the naive uh, solution, I would say. So polling is this. You're making a request, waiting for the answer, making the same request, waiting for the answer, and so on and so forth. OK, obviously, it works, uh, but it's not really a proper solution. It's much more close than a hack. The problem with polling is that you will make a lot of useless call. You will retrieve the same answer a lot of time. Um, basically, when you're making polling, 98.5% of polls are just wasted. Uh, another problem is that if the connection is break for any reason, you will not be able to retrieve data you've been missing. In our use case, the API is refreshed every second. So as you can imagine, having a mobile application which is going to make one call per second, that's not possible. I'm pretty sure the user will kill us when he sees data consumption. So, Let's forget about it. Um, yeah, so polling quickly and turn to polling madness. WebSockets. So I'm pretty sure almost everything has heard about WebSockets. Uh, it's a very cool push technology. It's uh, bi-directional, and it supports binary and text. Um, the only problem is it, uh, it has its own TCP-based protocol. So it does not rely on HTTP, which means that you have to reconfigure proxies and load balancer to use it. So at first, we don't, really need, we don't need to send data from the customer side to the server. We are not going to need binaries. And most of all, I don't have time to reconfigure proxies and load balancer in 15 minutes. 
So forget about the WebSockets too. Yeah, I'm f <laughs> I forgot my animations too. Uh, server sent events. So server sent events is the other push technologies, which is um, uh, under W3C specification. It's unidirectional, uh, which means that only the server is able to push data to the client, but it completely fits our use case. Um, it's about text only, okay, fine for us too. And best of all, it's completely HTML based. To, uh, use, H uh, to use server sent events, you just have to add a little header, accept text event stream, and it works. So that's the reason why we build stream data at IO, uh, which, so as I previously said, is a proxy available as SaaS. It works with any JSON API, and um, basically, so you're going to start a streaming session by asking the proxy to pull the API you were previously pulling on your side. Um, at the moment, we only support polling, but we are working on push connectors. Um, the big advantage of polling is that it was making it completely transparent for API provider, who are the big winners um, by using the proxy. Um, so obviously we're gonna we're gonna send changes on server sentiment with server sentiment, sorry. And um, we will added a dynamic catchy. So it means that if you get customers joining the session between two polls, instead of waiting for the next one, they can reach refresh data from the catchy. And we also uh, we are making incremental updates, uh, which is very important because it makes it uh, allow us to even reduce even more the amount of data exchanged. So for example, let's imagine that we open our streaming session, we are making first poll and retrieve some uh, a snapshot of data. On the second poll, if nothing has changed, we will not send you any data. There is no point to just send you back the whole document again. Okay. And if um, we can imagine that it's a big document we had, but only two or three fields of this document are changing frequently. On the third poll, only those changes will be sent. Um, and we are doing this with the JSON patch format. So JSON patch uh, basically defines a set of operations that could be applied to a JSON document. So for example, it could be add, remove, that kind of things. So if we imagine that this is the first snapshot, the first document we received on the third poll, we will retrieve this, and then you just have to use a JSON patch library to apply it to your initial document. So that's pretty fine. Okay, eight minutes left, let's move to the demo. So first of all, I'm going to uh, create a new Ionic application. So I'm going to say Ionic start ESS maps. So start command, as you can guess, is used to create a new application. The um, uh, ESS is the name of my application, and maps is a template I'm calling, because the really nice thing with Ionic is that it came with a few templates uh, to help you familiarize yourself with how Ionic works, how you're making application with, with Ionic. So you can have applications with, um, for example, side menus or header with buttons, that kind of things. Um, if it's too slow, perhaps I will just switch to my backup. <laughs> okay, fine. It's downloading a lot of things. Um, yeah, not that bad. Okay, so here, as you can see, um, Hynik is adding woo, native plugins. Um, and an iOS application, iOS application by default. This is because I'm uh, working on OS X. The wrong news is, the bad news, sorry, is that if you're not working on OS X, you will not be able to um, compile your application for iOS. But you can make it online. Well, they got solutions online, so uh, it's always good. Okay, so let's dive into the application. Let's run it. So I'm gonna run it with minus l which is gonna launch um, so it's an emulator, which is very nice because we have both versions of iOS and Android, but keep in mind it's an emulator only. So it means that you can't emulate everything. For example, we won't be emulate, uh, able to emulate Bluetooth. So here my map is focused on Ionic headquarters in Wisconsin. So that's nice, but not exactly what we want. Um, so let's go to see how it looks like, our application. So if you have already worked with Cordova, you will be very familiar with the structure of the application because it's complete Cordova. Um, it's, a, it's a complete Cordova arch architecture. You get hooks for your pre-compilation task and post-compilation task and that kind of things. You get your node modules, platforms here. We will find iOS. Okay, fine. 
uh, plugins. In case um, you need to add plugins, they will be installed there. Here it comes with a few uh, of them, like for example, Splash Screen, which is um, the screen you're saying at the loading of the application and which you can very easily customize with Ionic. Um, the folder which is going to interest us today is the 3W. That's the one where we are going to work. So I'm going to open this index.html page. First of all, I'm going to uh, just install dependencies I will need later. To win some time. OK, great. So now, looking at our index.html page, so if you have worked with AngularJS, I'm pretty sure you recognize everything. We got an ng app, we got an ng controller. And here we got a map object. And actually, this map object is just a directive, which I can see here, that we are going to customize first to make our application look a um, little bit more relevant for our use case. So first of all, I'm going to uh, declare new coordinates, which are uh, Cap Canaveral coordinates. And I'm going to redeclare my map options um, to put the map in satellite view and to remove street view control, which is not very useful in our use case. If we go back to our application, it should reload. OK, fine. Now we are going to add a little marker. So it's uh, another object in the JavaScript library. And I'm going to give my marker a little image as an icon so that we can finally find it on the map. OK, nice. Um, here you can see that we got a scope.onCreate method which takes the map as parameter. Actually, this method is used to pass the map object um, as parameter to the controller class. So as you can guess, oops, sorry, we're going to need to pass the marker to. So we're going to make it right now so that we don't forget about it. OK. Um, we're going to pass it there. OK, and here. So once we've done, we have done that, we can switch to, do, to the uh, real-time part of our application. OK, I have no idea how I can do that. Fine. Um, so let's move back to there. So this is the portal the developer portal of uh, some the proxy. You can create an account for free, and you can uh, make tests until 1 million messages and 10 connections in parallel for, uh, by per month for the rest of your life, basically, uh, for free. So I'm going to create a new application, which I'm going to call ESS, obviously. And so here, a token has been generated. Fine. So this token um, makes me sure that my data will not be seen by everyone. Here, I can copy-paste the API I would like to, to stream. So I'm going to just take my API, which looks like this, and paste it there. OK, and now I'm going to copy-paste just this here. And oh, authentication failed. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to try in the terminal. Perhaps I've screwed up my copy-paste. OK, looks fine. OK, so here my streaming session uh, is open. I received the first snapshot of data. So here it's a very simple document. And then I start to receiving patch. So I know my application is, uh, my API is refreshed every second. I go back to my API section. Here I can see that the API has been automatically provided by my curl command. So I'm going to configure it and change the polling frequency to 1. If I was having HTTP header or query parameters, I can put them there too. And obviously, I can add manually, duplicate, all that kind of things. And if I'm going back to my streaming session, so the polling frequency has automatically been updated without closing and reopening the stream. OK, so now let's move back to the code, see how it works in real life. So first of all, I'm going to import the two libraries I've been installing through Bower. So it's the streamdata.io JavaScript SDK and a JSON patch library to apply patches. OK, once I get this, I can go back to the controller. So first of all, I'm going to declare my API. And I'm going to declare my token. OK, so my API is this. My token could be found on the 
settings security section. Okay, and from this point, I'm going to create an event source object by calling streamdata.io dot create event source with the API and the token. And then I'm going to um, listen to the on data method, which is going to send me a snapshot. Here I'm going to attach coordinate to an object called ESS position. Fine. Then I'm going to create an on to call the onPatch method to listen to patches. And um, here I'm going to call my JSON patch library and apply my patches to my ESS position object like this. So here I just need a refresh method to refresh the map, which I'm going to call there and there. And then I'm just opening my event source. Oh, and if we are moving back to the application. Oh, thank you. Um, so I think there is one. On data, thank you. Up, oh, and I think this one is nice. Let's move back to this, and let's cross our fingers so it's not above the sea. Oh, stream that IO is not defined, so something has screwed up in my in installation. Um, wow, I'm really sorry. Um, plugins, no, um, not modules. Yep. It's not installed and I don't know why. I'm gonna run it from there. Actually, I broke my Bower this morning doing nothing. It was just uninstalled. It's a NPM pleasure. And I launch. And that should be moving. Yes, it is. So it's quite slow, but it's moving. <laughs> and here it is. Thanks for your attention.